How you doing, Steve Noble, Noble Moto? Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to change out the primary belt and pulleys on my 05 Dyna. Um, to start out, we're going to drain the oil out of the primary, pull the shifter, pull the peg, some bolts down here, uh, pull the outer primary cover off, then we're going to pull the inner primary components, the clutch and compensator and all that. Uh, then we'll pull the inner primary out, pull the sprockets off, or pulleys off, put the new ones on, put it all back together. Um, that's all I got. Let's get to it. All right, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to change it or drain the uh, oil out of the primary. There's a little plug down here. Uh, in this case, it's held on by a, a hex head bolt, which takes a 7 16 wrench. Uh, sometimes you'll find there's an Allen key up in there. Um, and you want to be careful when doing this because there's a pretty fine thread down in here and it's easy to strip it out. So. But you have to work at it, you have to force it, kind of work it in out as you go. Uh, if it makes you fight for every thread. Whoop! Here we go. Primary oil's drain out. Smells like primary oil. There's a little o-ring on there. Uh, right there. Gonna want to put a new one on there when we uh, put it back together, keep it from leaking. Next step, while that's draining, Got a uh, 5 16 Allen here. Uh, it's on a socket, on a ratchet. Uh, we're gonna pull the foot peg off with it. There's two bolts on here. That one, and that one. Shrink them out relatively easy. One bolt. A little cruddy. For some reason, you have to replace these bolts. Remember, they're three. Uh, or, um, get a uh, get a grade eight bolt um, to put in there. There you go. You can see all your road grime and shit down there. Uh, there's that. Next step: pull the shifter off here. There's a little uh, 5 16s 18 bolt goes right here. Takes a half inch wrench. Back it right off. Should thread right out. Should thread right out. And then it's on a spline shaft, so just we'll shift her off just like that. Ta da! Now, help keep track of these things. Put the bolt back in there. Next step from there. Remove our inner primary plate, or our uh, shifter plate here. Oh, sorry, this is a, well, normally this is a Torx bit, it's like T25 or T27, something like that. But uh, I really hate Torx bits, so I put Allen wrenches in almost all of them, except these two, which I will replace those with Allen bolts. There's that bolt. Now those two are the only two that actually hold it to the inner primary. These two just hold the cover on, uh, so we're just going to leave it there right now. Uh, next, we're going to pull all the outer bolts off. I'm um, going to make sure we keep track of which one goes where. Poke them, draw a little picture on a piece of cardboard, poke some holes through, put the bolts in there, help keep track of them. Most of the oil is drained out, so we're going to pull the last bolt off of here. Put 
All right, more oil might come out of the front here, so just be ready for it if it happens. Just like that. You're going to rag down here, down front. From there, good. Looks like we're gonna bolt. Should slide right out of there. Ah! Forgot one. There we go. Ta da! Here's your primary cover. Set that off the side. Make sure your hands are clean. Take your gasket and carefully set that off the side as well. Uh, we're going to pull the uh, primary setup off. So first we're going to pull off the tensioner shoe here. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to take the shifter shaft out. Uh, now we'll relieve our tension. Um, oh wait, hold on. Before we do that, we have to break these nuts free. So, before we do that, we're going to break uh, both our nuts free here to get this off. So, let's get to that. All right, here we go. Uh, so what we're gonna do to hold this whole thing in place is we got this primary locking tool. I bought this on Amazon for eight bucks. We should focus a little better there. There we go. Uh, it's a piece of nylon. Um, you stick it in there, and it's going to load up on itself as we crank it loose. This one is normal right hand thread, so lefty loosey. Um, this is an inch and three eighths socket. Um, you can pick these up, I don't know, wherever. You got any inch and three inch socket for this sucker. A lot of people use impact to help use the shock to break this thing free. Woo! Or you just pull on it. There we go. Not there yet. This goes on the end of your crank, so don't screw around with this and you know, or seeing any damage any threads. Threads look good there. Thing looks good on our spacer. You can carefully set this to the side to clean environment. Alright, back here, we have to pull, we're gonna have to pull this serenade nut off of here, uh, and then we're gonna pull this snap ring off. First thing I'm gonna do is pull the snap ring off. So you're gonna need some snap ring pliers down there in a little groove. Be ready in case it goes into orbit when it comes out of there. Oh, one second. Woo! Did not go into orbit. Still here. Also, put this in a safe, clean environment. Alright, got the snap ring out of there. Now we can remove this and take our adjustment out, which honestly, by the play up, I think it might not have been a perfect adjustment. But uh, we're going to pop this sucker out of here. should slide right out. There's a nut. Possibly. Hopefully you can see that. There it kind of focuses. Back in there. Alright, so from there, inch and 316 socket. So inch 316 socket back in there. We're going to take we've got our primary locking tool up in here. This one, like I said before, is left hand thread. So, lefty loosey, or lefty tighty, righty loosey. So, lock that up. Alright, so primary locking tools in place. The primary cover out, so I'm not putting my hands there. And lean down on it. And watch your knuckles. There we go. Free, just like that. Now, as I forgot to earlier, I'm going to take the tensioner off of here. Now the primary is loose. Or the primary components are loose. We'll just let that drop free. Alright, next step from here, 
Moment of truth. You mind this thing might be sharp. Take a primary locking tool out of there. I'm gonna slide the whole thing off. Hopefully you can see that. So the whole thing off is one. Ta da! bolts out here. Don't forget to take two bolts out of the starter over there. Makes this whole assembly loose. From here, you're going to take out the starter clutch. Slides right out of there. There's a little spring in here. Don't lose that. This is part of what slides forward and engages your starter. Where your starter engages on this thing. And, uh, slides forward, engages it. Slides out of the way. I'll give this a good inspection. This one's a little worn. It'll probably get replaced. Yeah, you can really see that. Yeah, take my word for it. There it goes. Slide out of there. Alright, got our little piece of parts out of here. All the bolts are out of there. The shifter shaft is loose. These bolts here. Pretty much grab the sucker and it comes right off of there. Full disclosure, I already had this off once, but I forgot to hit record. I'm doing it again for you. So this someplace Next step, there's um Two little bolts here that hold this locking ring on. So we're gonna take them off and we'll get a socket for this big nut here and uh, you know wrench that off of there and then the whole uh, sprocket will or the whole pulley will come right off the output shaft of the transmission. picked up our special socket it is a one inch and seven eighths socket uh, a normal deep well will not work even if you have an inch and eight seven eight inch and seven eighths deep well because uh, it has to clear the output shaft here for the transmission so you know where the clutch goes so uh, got one from low friends down there lowbrow customs uh, I think it was like 80 or 90 dollars somewhere in that range there are cheaper ones out there on Amazon but these things are used these nuts are usually absurdly tight and there's high strength thread locker on them so buy the good one um plus you have it i think the socket covers like 1936 to 2006 so you know it, it covers quite a few harleys and then your friends can you know pay in beer for borrowing it now with the socket you get this little bushing right here and what this does is this threads onto your output shaft right here and that helps support the socket while you're sitting there, or while it's on there and you're torquing on that way you're not side loading the socket and going crooked. Now back here, to help to lock the thing in place, there's a specially locking tool. But back here on the bike, I actually just take a extension, slide it through there, 
And that, because uh, remember this is left hand thread, so I'm going to turn to the right. So the bike's going to want to roll backwards. The pulley uh, will rock up. The extension will hit the swing arm. The extension is being held in place by the wheel. It'll all stay locked in place and should spin right out of there. God willing. Um, so one of the next things you want to do, so once you have that on there, uh, I put some penetrant on here for a couple days. Now, full disclosure, I actually fought like hell trying to get this thing off. This is, you know, the countless time I've attempted this. Um, my standard impact wouldn't do it. I had to borrow Bucky's uh, high torque impact um, to actually get the thread locker to break free. So don't be surprised. It really takes a month. I actually snapped a half-inch drive breaker bar on it. Hmm. It was a Do It Best brand from the local hardware store. So buy better breaker bars. Anyways. So I thread it back on here just to give you the whole demonstration. So thread your socket right through your socket on there. Take your breaker bar, your spare one after you broke one in the first place. Turn to the right because it's left hand threads. And it will come right off of there. Not that easy the first time though. But that nut spins right off of there. Ta-da, gonna wanna hang on to that. Clean up really well, clean out any th thread locker. Uh, that might be down the threads. Um, either take a thread file to it or uh, a little X-Acto knife or something just to kind of get down there. See if you can see it. And take a word for it. Um, just to clean the uh, old thread locker out of there and then clean the thread locker off the threads up here. Now to get the pulley off, um, you're going to want to loosen up your rear axle uh, and loosen your axle adjusters which are on the back of your swing arm. Um, Okay, I'll full disclosure back here. Whoop. You want to loosen up your axle adjusters here and on each side, uh, then break your axle free. And I just wrench them a ways out, and then you know you can tap on the whole assembly with a mallet, and the rear wheel will scoot in a little bit, and that'll give you all your slack on your belt. Sorry for the shaky cam. There we are. So now that the belt's all nice and loose here, take your little handy dandy little spacer off. Actually, we can just leave it on there. It'll be fine. And then, the pulley should slide right off of there. It's just sitting on the spline. There, there's your old pulley removal. Ta-da! And we're gonna pull the belt off, because the belt's coming off too. Now's a good time. Give this thing a good inspection down here. Uh, make sure there's no oil leaking out uh, of the transmission. If there was, now would be the time to replace the seal. Uh, looks like we are actually pretty dry. I have a little weep around the shifter shaft, but all this is actually kind of dried out. It's just a whole lot of road grime down in here. Um, so we'll clean all that before we put it back together, but looks like it's keeping all the oil in overall, which is a good sign. So, from there, well, before we get too far, we'll slide a new pulley on here just to keep track of it. So I have a new pulley here. I got the Baker Long Life, but supposedly lightweight pulley. Uh, supposedly it's a hundred thousand mile pulley um, and supposedly it's supposed to weigh a little less than stock from Baker on the hand scale and maybe a little bit. Uh, it's not night and day. So you're going to slide noose, new pulley right on, whoop, right there. Give it a good spin, make sure it doesn't hit anything back there behind it. I'm not even scraping the old dirt off so we're in good shape. Um, so next would be, or will be in a little bit to uh, clean the thread locker off of here the nut on we'll get that in a little bit first I'm gonna turn the camera off and uh, clean all this crap up with some degreaser scrub it all cleanish uh, then from there we will move to actually pulling the shock bolt out to take the belt off all right so got everything cleaned up right here next thing I do is pull the whoop, make some noise pull the uh, lower shock bolt off so we can actually get the belt off the swing arm uh, so we're gonna need to get the back of the bike up in the air so, while we're here, I don't know where my little handle wrench went, but I have a little scissor jack here, a little Harbor Freight one. Uh, it works really handy for picking the bike up. They actually make motorcycle ones for this. Again, I'm sure they're outstanding. But frankly, I'm kind of cheap, so you know, I want the cheap route. So, just gotta go high enough to get the rear wheel off the ground.
and unload the shocks. All right, so got this jacked up. Shocks are unloaded. Tire is barely touching the ground. So we're going to take a three-quarter wrench and put that on the back of the nut, the shock nut there. Hopefully you can see that. And we have a 5 16 Allen wrench. I want to sock it so we can take that, break it free. Ta-da! And wrench this on out of here. Trying to drop the nut. Keep track of that. There's some spacers on here you're going to want to keep track of too. Carefully mind the spacers. Slide the nut on out of there. There we go. There's our spacers, our washer, and we can lift our shock up. A little bit bigger belt. Slide our old belt right through there. There's our old belt. Ta da! If you're wondering what an old belt looks like, uh, this one isn't terrible, but it's starting to get chewed up and uh, it was starting to go out of adjustment quite often. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, see, it's kind of chewed up. You can see on the profile a little bit. See, it's kind of got a flat on one side. So, anyways, take a new belt. Slide it up underneath the shock there. Slide around your rear pulley general space to keep it out of the way. Take a shock bolt, of course, and reassemble it all. Find your spacers. All right. Got the rear pulley swapped out and everything. Got the belt back on here. Um, gonna take our new pulley. Ta-da! Right there. We're gonna slide it right on up on there. Slide it right on the spline. Make sure it slides around there nice and easy. Or we check that it spins clear and everything. Hardly recommends putting the oil on here on the back of the face of this, and then we're gonna put thread locker actually on the thread. So uh, I'm going to go a slightly different route and take a wee little bit of wheel bearing grease and uh, put that on there. The reason for that is I'm worried if I put motor oil on here, it'll end up raining down and it'll wash the thread locker off. Uh, they're mostly just worried about lubrication of the nut against the pulley. So, not that they're wrong, but we're going to take just a wee little bit of wheel bearing grease here. not have it down in the threads or anything so it doesn't wipe out the uh, so it doesn't wipe out the thread locker and we're gonna take some red high strength high strength being the key colors are relevant because it varies by manufacturer high strength thread locker and we're gonna put just a wee little bit on there and smear it around this stuff goes a long ways so just one little drop grease side there Slide on here, remember? Left handed thread, so lefty tighty. It should thread on there all the way, pretty much by hand. If it doesn't thread by hand, or maybe a tad bit more than by hand, um, you probably need to clean your threads a little bit better. Spin this on there to where it's snug, like so. And we're going to pop our belt in place. All right, end up do over here. End up pulling the pulley back off because um, it, it wouldn't slide over with you know, the rear wheel already on the bike. Um, so, whoops on my part. But anyway, so what we're going to do to compensate for that is once we now we got the pulley up close, we're going to we slid the belt up on here, and now we're going to slide it into the spline. Hopefully. be a relatively tight and close fit though. Ta-da! Alright, slid it right on there. So once again, take the cap off. A little dab of thread lock around there. We got a little grease on the face of the pulley, so that's cool. We're going to lefty tighty and nut right on there. Now, since our belt's on here and everything, we can slide our locker back through the, uh, which is an extension, back through the rear wheel here, the swing arm. 
And actually, since we're going the other way, we're going to put this up. Then we can take our breaker bar, snug this up. And then what the manual says is to torque this to 60 foot-pounds, um, then turn it a quarter turn. No, 45 degrees is what the manual says. I'm sorry. Turn it 45, torque it 60 foot-pounds and turn it to 45 degrees. Why Harley doesn't just give us torque specs? I don't know. Please, Harley, start giving us torque specs. So, we're going to torque it spec, um, and then we'll tighten her down. Side note, in addition to having the bike on the lift, I just slid my broken breaker bar through the front there. That'll help keep the bike from rolling forward as I tighten this sucker up. So, I'm going to torque it 60 foot-pounds first, and torque. I almost spun the wheel a little bit. Oh, it locks in place now. Rip up. There is 60 foot pounds. All right. This is tighten the transmission sprocket 45 to 35 to 45 degrees more. I wish I was making that up, but I'm not. So, here we go. Oh, shit, I'm spinning back tire. What the fuck is that possible? Because my lock popped out. That's all. This is probably why you buy this specially little pulley locking tool that goes on here and then you don't have this problem. Try to get right and... Ooh. Yeah, that thing ain't going any tighter. Fuck that 45 degrees. It ain't going anywhere. So, it's tight. Okay, so the old one came off and it had this locking plate on here. Um, apparently Baker says don't use the locking plate, just put the screws in here and let the head of the screw jam the lock plate and lock nut in place. That seems like it's really some hillbilly shit here, Baker. Not gonna lie. But uh, hey, maybe it'll fucking work. So anyways, got our medium strength thread locker here. Whoop, little dab there. Remember, a little dab goes a long ways. Put that excess on the um, old one there. We're going to thread that in there. Now keep in mind, whichever hole you thread this is, remember it's left hand thread, so wherever you thread it, it's you got to prevent it from turning to the right. Um, so we're just going to run the head of these screws down in here and I mean, this does work. I'm not gonna lie, it still seems weird to me though. And tighten those up the manufacturer's specifications. All right, uh, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna pull the rear wheel off this thing so we can change out the pulley. Now, the pulley was back ordered due to COVID, so I got another bike on the lift, so this is back on the ground. So just as a bonus, we're gonna cover how to get your rear wheel off with your bike on the ground. Figured, why not? So, this is how I do it. All right, so next thing I did was jack it up. So right now the bike is sitting on the wheels and the jack stands underneath the front crash bar. So I'm gonna put the jack underneath the front mount, lift the bike up, keep lifting the jack stands up because I wanna get the front wheel up in the air. That way I can lift the back of the bike up pretty far and give the front tire some drop. Make sure you don't pinch any cables. Make my clutch cables right there. I'm gonna hold on to the bike with one hand. Keep it stable. Lift her up. Lift the one jack stand. Up the other jack stand. Still stable? Yes. Make sure jack stands are locked in. 
Lower the jack back down. So do that. You want to make sure you're on the frame engine mount and the frame part of the engine mount, not the actual engine mount itself. This might not run. Now we we'll go to the back. And we'll lift the back of the bike up. And watch the whole thing tilt. I'm just gonna go the front tire almost hits the ground. And ta-da! The back end is now way up in the air. A little bit of process, but it works. Alright, over here on the right side of the bike. All right, now I already have the clip out of this thing. And if you notice, my axle is backwards from where it is from the factory. That way I don't pull the muffler off every time I pull the rear tire off the thing. So, I'm just going to back this off with our... Oh, whole axle's turning. I'm going to back this off with our uh, 15 16 wrench. All right. Find that down off the side. Keep track of your washer right there. Keep everything in good order here. And over here, and grab this axle and hopefully pull it out of there. This might really require more hands than I have cameras. I'm gonna take the wood end of a hammer here. Probably shaky. I apologize. And from there. As you can see, start to pull it out. When we get to that point, we'll have to slide the brake caliper out of the way. Then keep track of all the washers down here. I'm going to have to put the camera down to do this. And from there, as you can see, start to pull it out. When we get to that point, we'll have to slide the brake caliper out of the way. Then keep track of all the washers down here. I'm going to put the camera down to this. Five, four. I'm going to hold the wheel up. Keep pulling on the axle. Ta-da! Spacer falls out. Watch your brake caliper because you don't want to get hung up on stuff. And sometimes it falls out of there a little faster than you expect it to. Like this. Pull your belt off. Slide your wheel down. Find out your spacers there that you dropped. The one from this side. Roll your tire, put your tire, right back on out of there. Ta-da! Now we can change this shot pulley off. Want to see what a shot pulley looks like? Hopefully you can see that. There's some steps down on there. Try my phone. All right, here's what shop pulley looks like. Whoops, sorry. See how these grooved? On this side, there's a radius. On that side down there, it's really sharp and chewed up. Look how sawtooth that is. This pulley's only got like 10,000 miles on it. I uh, got this from Ultima. Um, you can even see. You can see the step there, how worn down it is. I got this pulley from Ultima, because it broke my stock one on the tire machine. And uh, yeah, I thought, ooh, it's cool, it's shiny, it's chrome. Yeah, well, the chrome flaked off the aluminum. It chewed the hell out of the uh, aftermarket pulley. So, 
not the poly for you if you want to put some miles on. So, I bought another stock one. We'll be changing it out. Um, so there's been a lot of debate of these rear pulleys coming off and bolts backing out and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna give you the rundown of at least what I use for procedure on this and what has not failed me yet, knock on wood, it won't start failing me again anytime soon. So hopefully you can use this and uh, not end up with your pulley jammed inside your wheel on the side of the road. So here we go. All right, one of the next steps we're gonna go through here is we're gonna make sure the surface is nice and clean. Uh, so we're gonna sand, give it quick light sand. I think what bites a lot of guys besides the crap in the threads that gives you a missed torque uh, number, um, I think you get a little bit of corrosion here on this aluminum face and just a wee little bit, you know, might make the pulley sit a little cockeyed so it never really seats down properly when they torque it down. So I'm gonna take a little sanding block here, just way of the hand. Just knock off any high spots there, any corrosion. Actually see there's a little bit of powder coat on here from Harley. We all know they have great quality control. So just a nice little clean surface. If I was putting stock pulley back on, I would take the inside face of stock pulley and give it a little sand too. Now just getting debris off of there. Safety glasses. Gonna take some bright clean or compressed air. We're gonna hose out each hole and hose off the face, I think. Stand it up so it drains out. rain out there, soak in the wood on my workbench. Probably warp it later on and frustrate the hell out of me. Take an old rag here, wipe off what's left on the wheel, what's left on the face, and we are ready for the installation. All right, next step, um, get everything cleaned off, cleaned up really well. Uh, we've got our pulley here. And of course, we've got our drag specialty spacer. I'm not plugging drag specialties, it's just who made it. Uh, so we're gonna set this up there in place, line it up, make sure it sits all nice and flat. Now I bought some new bolts for this. Uh, I got grade eights, uh, bike came with grade fives. Local hardware store had grade eights, so you know, why not go bigger? Uh, got the same size, got some thick fender wa or thick washers to go on there, some machine washers. Just gonna line it up there, start these in. Now I'm just gonna hang two bolts on here, then I'm gonna put Loctite on the threads. So I'm actually gonna end up taking those ones back out. But for the time being, just to hang it in place and for demonstration. Now you can see I'm throwing these bolts in pretty much at my fingertips. If you're having any more binding than that, or you gotta use a ratchet to run them in here, uh, something's wrong. You might wanna take the bolts back out and take a look at your uh, threads down inside there. All right, I uh, already started two bolts in here. Uh, just to get fully lined up and everything. Uh, got some blue Lockta here. Put a little dab here if you can see it. Just one little dot there. The first couple threads. That's all you need. Thread each one of these in here uh, until they're finger tight. Now we kind of put two of them in and snugged them up a little bit just to uh, make sure the pulley and everything was centered. 
Uh, I had a flat wide with that, then I wouldn't be able to stand it back up here. So. And the last bolt here. A blue lock down the end there. all the way in there. This one's got a faint little tight spot on it, so. Spin it past tight spot. We'll snug them all up a little bit. So they all make contact right there. All right. Uh, now we're gonna go around, we're gonna give them all a little bit of a pull with the little 3 8 drive ratchet, and I'll go back with the torque wrench and actually torque them all spec. What I'm going to do is, of course, cross-cross pattern, just like your lug nuts. So there, there, there. And like so. All right, so you're going to want to torque all these down spec. Harley Manual says these are uh, 56 foot-pounds uh, for each one of these on cast uh, aluminum wheels. Uh, so I'm going to take my breaker bar here, and I'm going to torque them to right about that. Uh, my uh, actual torque wrench uh, apparently has been loaned out and not returned. Big shocker. So, torque these down anyways. Stand the wheel up here. Get a hold of it. Of course, still in the crisscross pattern. It's always good to hug your wheels. back and do all the rest of these. Pull one more time to make sure nothing's seated in too far. There you have it. Rear pulleys reinstalled on the bike. Now, a little trick I like to do since these are problematic, I didn't safety wire them. I like to make sure that they're all still uh, torqued down in the same spot. So it's nice to be able to make quick glance, uh, you know. When you're in the parking lot or wherever about to go for rides, I'm gonna take a little black magic marker. I'm just gonna put a little dash on each one of these, basically pointing towards the axle on the head of the bolt. Or use a paint marker, or whatever you feel is nice and subtle, but you can still see. So now every time I walk by the thing, I can look down there and I can see if one. Line this back up on here like so. So I got the bolt repaired here that I stripped out um, when I was doing the install. Um, check one of my other videos for that. 
So back to where we were. So I have all these bolts in here and they're all snubbed up. Um, I think they're all torqued to spec, but I'm gonna give them all pulled to be sure. Um, and then on each one of these, there's a little tab that you bend over and you press up against the flats of the head of the bolt. And what that does is that keeps the vibration from backing those back off of there. Uh, when you buy your new seal kit uh, with your for your primary, it should come with new ones of those, especially if you buy a whole gasket kit. Uh, pretty straightforward on those. Um, so we're gonna run through that and then uh, put the uh, primary back on. You know, put the primary drive back on. So here we go. So all you really gotta do is start with a clean screwdriver, not that scuzzy one. You're gonna take these little flats that are on here. I don't know if you can see there or not. And, you know, light hammer work. Oh, wait, you know what? We're gonna give all those a pull first. Because that one moves surprisingly easily. Alright, so, torquey bolt to spec. Crisscross pattern. All right, now, take a flathead screwdriver. You'll be able to get in there and pour a small punch. Doesn't bounce too much. Maybe not. Never. Five, four, three, all right, got all the bolts tightened down on here. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually pick up the primary, slide it back on here. You wanna make sure your splines are clean on each one of these. You wanna make sure your threads are clean. Remember, there's Loctite on these, so you don't want that back on there gumming up the threads. So, I'm gonna grab our primary from our safe and clean spot over here. Have the primary chain already on it. Also, there's any washers that need to go on behind it. Now would be the time to put them on. So running the BDL compensator, I have a spacer that goes on back here. That is not correct. It goes on the outside. Oh no, yeah, it wouldn't be there. Alright, we have our primary here. All this has to slide on is one unit. You can't get the chain on after you put one of the gears on. So, it all has to slide on here at the same time, uh, preferably with the primary chain over top of the tensioner. Not underneath it. Like I just did. All right. Where are we going further? Give it all a good look over. Make sure everything's seated. Make sure chains lined up and everything. All right, now that you have the everything's up on, it's already slid on the place there. You have to find the tube of Loctite that you just had in your hand, and you can't locate it now. Mm -hmm. Now we found the Loctite. Gonna take some medium strength Loctite. You see, just a few little dabs there on the thread. First, we're gonna put it on the front front compensator. Remember, righty tighty on the front one. Seated back up on there. That's up on there. Grab the nut for the uh, clutch. Once again, make sure this is all nice and clean. Remember, everything takes up space. 
including dirt and grit. I can't have dirt and grit in there. I expect it to get tightened down. Now with this one, since it's hard to reach back in there, we're gonna put the uh, I'll dab a medium strength thread locker. Whoop. Back in there. Ta -da. Should be able to get this back in here and lefty tighty. Sucker right on in. Alright. Now we got that up in there and snug. We're gonna take our inch and three sixteen socket. Put down our three-quarter drive set or whatever you have for a drive set. Put the lid back on our Loctite so it doesn't dry out. I'm going to take a primary locking tool. Andy Danley $8 one from eBay. Remember, this is lefty tighty. So this will go on the bottom, jamming itself down in the primary chain there. Then, we're going to take the clutch. We're going to tighten it up. It doesn't quite grab. You might have to Slide in there a little bear. Don't pinch your fingers. There we go. And then, step in front of the camera. Then, torque that to manufacturer's specifications. Which is pretty tight, in case you didn't know. Pull your locking tool out. Switch over the front. See it slide right up in there. Switch over to your. Switch over to your inch and three eight socket. Tighten that up on. Put that up on there. Oh, we're not quite there yet. Oh shit! I'm in front of the camera. All right, tighten that up on there and torque that to manufacturer's specifications. Right about there. Ta-da! Primary drive gears are installed. Next, we're gonna tension our uh, primary chain tensioner shoe there and then we'll be ready for uh well I'll put the starter back in place and then we'll be ready for the outside cover and the shifter linkage of course so here we go all right before we start this process put this back together if you want to loosen this up this is going to be your clutch adjustment maybe back this in or out a little bit probably back the rod out some and right, when you slide it out back in there it'll drop in there nice and easy and it'll be easy to get the snap ring in there that snap ring pliers snap ring pliers it's always good to have good ones of these cheap ones suck spend money on good snap ring pliers you'd be happy did that way snap right back in there like that now the basics of setting this i think i did another video on actual clutch setup but my clutch cable is still good um, and it still should be set, but I'm going to crank this all the way in until it tightens up. Mm, yes. And we're going to back it off just to where, you know, we're doing this all by feel here, right? So we're going to bracket in there, makes contact. I'm going to crack it off ever so slightly. We're going to run the nut in there and we're going to snug up the nut. We'll do a final adjustment on the clutch here in a minute. Not that much. That right. All right, so that's on there. Let's get the starter and stuff in place. All right, well, last steps here before we slap it all back together. Second last step. We're going to adjust the primary chain tension. So we're going to run it. I'm just going to take my finger, push all the way up till it makes contact. There's a, I like the stock. Um, push all the way up till it makes contact. And then we're going to run this in here just like that. So I like the, top, the stock primary chain tensioners. I realize I'm really close to the microphone and I need to stop yelling. I'm sorry. So I realize I, or I like the stock primary chain tensioners because it's really a solid little setup. Yes, you have to make an adjustment every once in a while, but it's still pretty good. 
Um, so, Harley says you should have five eighths to three quarters of an inch. I think it's half to three quarters of an inch play up here uh, on the top thing with it all this tensioned up. Make sure you didn't leave your tensioner. Stop block puck in there too, by the way. So right there, that's like one notch too tight. So we're gonna go, we're gonna loosen up just ever so slightly. And we're gonna try to go down one notch. I usually fail this the first time. I think we got lucky here. I'm gonna just run in there till it's snug. Cause it's on a little spline groove here, so it's being held in place. Now we're gonna check our tension. That's about a half inch to five eighths of an inch. That's good. Good play right there. So, I'm gonna take that and we'll tighten around down. Manufacturer's specification. Check it again. It's a good amount of tension. Uh, if you have too much or too much slop in there, this chain's gonna whip all over the place and uh, you know chew things up, uh, especially when you're engine braking. Um, but yeah, so good tension, good, good important. One of these things is moved and not pointing point towards the center. Uh, I know the bolt's backing out and uh, we got problems that need to be addressed ASAP. All right, got the primary gasket hung up on there. Got our primary cover here. Everything's all cleaned off, we're ready to go. So we're gonna pop this sucker right up on there, on the studs. Got a couple bolts at the ready here. And the T-handle Allen wrench. So, I'm not gonna tighten anything down. Get the bolts started. Enough to keep the gasket lined up. Keep the cover hanging in place. Start another one back here. All right. Now we're gonna run this in, but not to not to where the head bottoms out. Just enough to hang it in place. Now, we're gonna go around the thing, put all the bolts in, uh, start them all in, uh, then we'll torque them up. All right, got our bolts on. Uh, so we got our shifter plate here. Um, this is one of my problematic areas. Um, so I cleaned the surface off really good. Now there is some coating here, just some paint, uh, but Clematic says that shouldn't be a problem. They say this gasket should cover it. Um, so it is a pretty thick gasket. It is pretty deep of the foam rubbery material that's on there. So we're going to plop this into place here, just like that. If you have problems getting your gasket to stick in place, you know, keeps wanting to fall out, kind of like that. You can take a little grease, put it on the back side of the gasket. Just a little dab will kind of work like a glue. Now we got our uh, shifter plate here. We're gonna slide that over top. Slide that right into place. I'm gonna look through the holes here. Make sure our bolts line up as they should and do. Make sure the gasket lines up too. I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna do these two bolts here first. Because these two longer bolts here actually help hold the primary cover in place. These two uh, just do the shifter plate here. So for starters, start those in there. And once again, take our T-handle down wrench, run these in. You might find you have Torx bits. I personally hate Torx bits. So I, one by one, I've replaced all these bolts out with uh, stainless steel Allen head socket head cap screws. All right, next step, we're gonna torque all these down. Um, now, there is a torque pattern to this and then a torque specification. Um, the pattern itself, I will post a picture of it at the end of this video so you can see. And then the torque spec is to 84 to 108 inch pounds. Right. Um, so, we're gonna start snugging them all up in order. So, first one. And we're going by the uh, shop service manual on this. So two there, and two there. I'm going to slow for the first run through here. After that, we'll put it all in time lapse. I'm going to run around this whole thing.
it's very important to torque these things to spec in the proper order. That way you don't warp and twist the cover as you do it. All right, everything's snugged down. Oops, sorry. 13 and bolt. 14. All right, from here, we're gonna hit. All right, got a little tip right here. Service manual tells you to torque these to spec, then put these two in, torque them to spec. Don't do that. What happens is you can potentially cock this plate a little bit, and when you go tighten down these two, you'll never get them tight enough. So, snug these suckers up down in here. Then we're gonna go back and torque these outer two to spec. This way, we know the whole plate is tightened up evenly. Snug that one up. Snug that one up. Snug that one. And that one. Now I'll go back and tighten them all up and torque them up. 